Last year, Huntley won The Voice. Way before that, he was homeless in Nashville, sleeping on a bench in Centennial Park. Now, he played an intimate show at the Analog barely a mile from the park, celebrating the release of his new single, Tell Me When It's Over. He's become much more than just a winner of The Voice. He's a bona fide artist with gravelly vocals, a bluesy style, and a genuinely personable stage presence. That word, genuine, fits Huntley to a T. That's what he's all about, being his genuine self on stage and off. It's something he feels is missing from the music industry as well. He can tell what the industry is lacking, and he wants to fill that void. Huntley took the stage at Analog surrounded by a mix of industry types and genuine fans who watched his journey on The Voice. Someone came from England to be here tonight, he says later, with a hint of awe and disbelief. He also invited a family from New Jersey who contacted him through social media. With a front row seat on a comfortable couch, the family, whose daughter Tiffany is a huge fan, enjoyed the VIP treatment. Huntley explained that the family dynamic between Tiffany and her brother touched him deeply. He also mentioned that his own sister was there to support him. It's the little things that showcase how much of a genuine, honest person Huntley strives to be, both in his music and in life. The show was electric and engaging. Huntley thrives in an intimate setting like Analog, where he can interact with fans between songs. Backed by a five-piece band of incredibly talented, culturally diverse musicians, Huntley began with a rollicking blues song that pulled from Virginia imagery. It included Dogwood Flowers, the Blue Ridge Parkway, and the Shenandoah Valley. The song included a saxophone solo from Sam Skelton, which called to mind Jeff Coffin of Dave Matthews' band. We just went and played a show at my daughter's elementary school, Huntley says, and some people have never seen a girl in a band. And my saxophone player is more than just a girl in a band, but I'm saying, for those kids, you know where I'm from in the country, they've only seen a bunch of old white dudes playing in a band. To me, I wanted it to be nothing close to that. I wanted to show that the world's going to be united. Huntley launched into his new single early in the set. Tell Me When It's Over is a steady bluesy rock song that explodes into the full power of Huntley's husky vocals near the end. I wrote it slightly about a relationship I was going through on The Voice, says Huntley about the song. It was a struggle. I was dealing with a lot emotionally behind the scenes that no one knew at all. And it was kind of a point where you're kind of looking for the other person to tell you when it's over. He continued, that song, to me, kind of transitioned to something even bigger than that. It was more like everything I dealt with. It just felt like there was always something else. There was always something else after it, and it just felt like the pain I was feeling, not only from her, but everything else in life. It's like I was just begging. Tell me when it's over. And the funny thing is, it's never over. Yeah, it's never over. It's never going to be over. However, Huntley explained that instead of getting depressed about that fact, he's harnessed it and used it to keep him motivated. The song signifies that I'm not done fighting for this, that I got something to say, and that I'm really coming genuine from my heart and really trying to grasp onto the people that are looking for that. Huntley also gave his gathered fans a preview of his next single, Fire and Flames. This one is more along the lines of a classic rock song. It has a steady beat courtesy of Joe Palmer on the drums and Jimi Hendrix-esque wailing guitar from Walking Eagle, who was also a contestant on The Voice. Hunkley and his amazing band kick it into high gear for the song's Gemini, which comes complete with solos from Sam and Walking Eagle, adding to the jazzy, blues feel of the entire night. I see them grinding, and I see the opportunity, I have to just be able to put literally some of my favorite people in the world together as a team, Huntley says of his band, which also includes Daniel John on bass and Tyler Rose on guitar. It just feels like some of my favorite bands, like Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band or Dave Matthews Band. You can't fake that kind of stuff, and I love every single person on that stage. He continued, You know, I won The Voice and I did this really cool thing, but I'm still a single dad of two that has some best friends and we're ready to spread some love around the world and just be genuine people no matter where we go. With this bunch I don't ever see that changing, and I think it comes across in the music for sure. He band ended the night with an encore of Stevie Ray Vaughan's Pride and Joy. Huntley took the song to its heights with his signature vocal style. Again, Sam and Walking Eagle each took solos. 
The command that the band has of their instruments is remarkable. The talent in that room was something physical, it was palpable. You can feel it in your chest as Joe Palmer and Daniel John keep a steady, pulsing beat on drums and bass. As Walking Eagle and Tyler Rose shirt on guitar. As Sam Skelton wails on her sax. It's the perfect background to Huntley's powerful, gravelly vocals. I understand that you can't do anything alone, he says, speaking about the friendships he's gained through his band. Before every gig we get together, and we hold hands and we pray. And I feel like no matter what religion or background you come from, it's just a beautiful thing when people are a collective with the same mindset and hearts, like the heart of these guys. Like my team says, you don't have a crystal ball, you can't see what's coming next. But I'm glad I have those guys and girl that have my back. It was a hot August night in Nashville, the kind that wraps around you like a warm blanket, and Music City's famed Bluebird Cafe was alive with a palpable sense of anticipation. Inside the dimly lit venue, a small crowd sat elbow to elbow, their chatter filling the cozy room with a hum of excitement. Tonight was no ordinary night, and this was no ordinary performance. Hunkley, the newest winner of The Voice, was about to take the stage. But this wasn't about the flash and dazzle of television. This was something different, something more personal. For Hunkley, the last few months had been a whirlwind of interviews, photo shoots, and public appearances since clinching the title on the hit singing competition. But tonight, in this intimate setting, he was determined to strip away the glitz and glamour, to let his music speak for itself and to show the world, and perhaps more importantly, himself, that he was more than just a reality TV star. The Bluebird Cafe is a place steeped in musical history. It's where many legendary artists got their start, from Garth Brooks to Taylor Swift. It's a room that has witnessed countless dreams come true, but also where the purest form of music still lives, stripped down, unvarnished and honest. For Huntley, this was sacred ground. As the clock ticked closer to showtime, the energy in the room shifted. The crowd, which consisted of fans, industry insiders, and a few recognizable faces, including some of Huntley's former The Voice competitors, leaned forward, craning their necks toward the stage. The dim lights flickered and a hush fell over the room. A single spotlight illuminated a lone microphone stand and an acoustic guitar resting against a stool. Dressed in a simple black t-shirt and jeans, Huntley walked onto the stage with a quiet confidence. He looked different from the last time most of them had seen him. On that brightly lit stage of the voice, surrounded by confetti and screaming fans. Here, under the soft glow of the bluebird's lights, he seemed smaller, more vulnerable. Yet there was an unmistakable strength in his presence. He took a deep breath, flashed a nervous smile, and sat down on the stool, cradling the guitar in his lap. Hey, everyone, he began, his voice low and calm, a far cry from the booming charisma that had captivated millions on national television. Thank you for being here tonight. I know it's a small room, but that's what makes it special, right? A few cheers erupted from the crowd, and he grinned. I want to do something a little different tonight. I want to show you the songs that mean the most to me. Songs I've written over the years that never quite found their way into the spotlight. With that, he strummed the first few chords of a song that had never been heard before, a raw ballad called Lost and Found. The lyrics, simple and profound, spoke of love, loss, and the search for oneself amidst the chaos of life. As he sang, his voice, rich and resonant, filled the room, drawing everyone in closer. There was a vulnerability in his performance, a depth of emotion that was unmistakable. It was as if he was bearing his soul, revealing pieces of himself that had remained hidden even to his most ardent fans. The audience sat mesmerized. Here was a man who had won a national competition, yet tonight, he was proving that his music could stand on its own, beyond the confines of a television show. As he moved through his set, alternating between new songs and fresh interpretations of the covers that had helped him win the voice, it became clear that Huntley was not just a product of the machine. He was an artist in his own right. One of the highlights of the evening came midway through his set when he introduced a song called Home Again. Huntley paused before